The dynasty of the Sackler family began in 1952 when brothers Arthur, Mortimer, and Raymond purchased a small pharmaceutical company and became pioneers of medical marketing. A generation later, that pharmaceutical company became known as Purdue Pharma. In 1995, under the leadership of Raymond's son Richard, Purdue introduced the United States to its medical miracle, the magical capsule that could melt pain away and give people back their lives. Except it did anything but that. So, how could an entire pharmaceutical company not realize they were selling candy-coated addictions? You know what, let me rephrase that. How much profit made it acceptable to ignore that fact? There you go. Over the span of the company's existence, Purdue earned $31 billion in revenue, with the majority of that wealth going right back into the pockets of the Sackler family. So the Sackler family, as part of that settlement, would have to cough up just $225 million of their personal wealth, which is less than 2.5% of the total amount of money they withdrew from Purdue solely during the peak of the crisis from 2008 to 2017. Oh, and they were also allowed to continue to admit no wrongdoing and not face any criminal charges. Charges. The Clay crime family was formed by Lincoln Clay in 1968 as a result of his desire for revenge against Sal Marcano and the Marcano crime family for family. Throughout the summer and fall of 1968, Lincoln waged his war on Sal's operations, dismantling them one by one and putting his own people in their place. Afterwards, Lincoln met with Leo Galante, who came to New Bordeaux on behalf of the commission. After Lincoln assured Leo that he had no quarrel with them, the two came to an agreement that Lincoln could have New Bordeaux and run it any way he pleases, as long as he kicked up 20% to the commission once a month. Now, the family runs various rackets in all nine districts of New Bordeaux, covering everything from auto theft to waste disposal, including a lot of lucrative businesses that are run by Mitch DaCosta. Lucy Beland, also known as Ma Beland, was based in Fort Worth, Texas, and she and her offspring sold a lot of fun things. Uh, things that make you feel good. No, no snow. Spicy spoon juice. These members were convicted of a lot of crimes. I mean, like, at least 30 convictions between 1921 to 1947. In 1911, her son Charles impaled another boy and was charged with causing physical harm, but later released on probation. And later that year, daughter Willie was caught as part of a shoplifting ring of a dozen girls. By the way, turns out uh, Ma had organized that whole shoplifting school. Goodness gracious. Willie and Cora were arrested once again for shoplifting in 1912. Willie was arrested also one more time in 1912 for possession of No No Snow. I think between 1921 to 1947, there was at least 30 charges, folks. Like, it, there's a lot to talk about here. The Colombo crime family is the youngest of the five families that dominate organized crime in New York City. They trace their roots to a bootlegging gang that was formed by Joseph Profaci in 1928. Now, this family has been torn apart by at least three internal wars. In 1991, the third and worst one erupted when acting boss Victor Orena tried to seize power from Carmine. If you know, you know. The family split into factions loyal to Arena and Persico, and two years of mayhem ensued. Now, this ended in 1993 with 12 family members and imprisoned, leaving Persico the winner more or less by default. Once again, their crimes, as long as my arm, folks. While the Borgias are more associated with the Renaissance period and the Papal States than ancient Rome, their reputation for political intrigue, poisonings, and assassinations, and makes them one of the most notorious families in Roman history. At the heart of this nefarious clan was Rodrigo Borgia, who in 1492 ascended to the papal throne as Pope Alexander. His reign was marked by a brazen display of nepotism as he elevated his illegitimate offspring, Cesar and Lucrezia, to positions of power and influence within the Vatican. The Julio Claudian dynasty was the first imperial dynasty of Rome. They had the first five emperors, Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius, and Nero. While they had some accomplished rulers like Augustus, they also had emperors infamous for their cruelty and excess. We're talking Caligula, Nero. Among the many dynasties that ruled over the sprawling empire, this one stands out as one of the most unsettling. They were a roller coaster ride of power, intrigue, and brutality. But it's not just the heinous emperors that make this dynasty so spine chilling. Caligula is infamous for his very bizarre, very awful antics, which included making his horse a consul and reveling in cruelty. And then, uh, Tiberius. A lot of debauchery, a lot of tyranny, a lot of things I can't talk about. The Kelly family was an American family of killers who operated between August and December of 1887 near a town called Oak City, just south of the Kansas state border in no man's land, now the Oklahoma Panhandle. So this was a family led by William Kelly, his wife Kate, they also had Bill and Kit. 
the offspring. Originally from Pennsylvania, this family killed at least 11 wealthy travelers. Initially dealing with cattle, they soon opened a tavern and they housed fellow cattlers and travelers. But in the span of a couple of months, a number of people had disappeared mysteriously along the road leading to the tavern. Despite this, nobody suspected the family of doing anything until around December, when the occupants suddenly left the house without notifying anybody. Well, a short while afterwards, a traveler from St. Louis named S.T. Gregg, who had visited there before, decided to stop by, check it out. Upon entry, a foul stench overtook him, coming from a hidden cellar underneath the house. The bodies of not one, not two, but three men, already in an advanced state of decomposition, were discovered, as well as a trap door underneath the tavern's floor. News came through that all four members of the Kelly family had passed through Beaver a few days prior en route to New Mexico. So. Angry posse formed. They were like, okay, come on, let's go get this family. Then it turns out they were going towards Texas. After a while, the posse did catch up with them. There was a two hour long chase. Eventually, Kate's horse tripped. Kate fell to the ground, breaking her neck in the process. So she was left behind. And then a half an hour later, the vigilantes caught up with Bill and Kit, but Bill managed to escape. Upon capture, Kit began pleading for mercy, only to be told off for being uh, complicit in everything. And as he guessed it, that was the end of that family. Apart from the Julio Claudian dynasty mentioned earlier, the Claudi were also a powerful family in their own right. So, at the top of the family, Tiberius. His rule was marked by a dark undercurrent of intrigue and cruelty. He withdrew from public life to the island of Capri, where a lot of rumors of debauchery and some uh, lethal things swirled around him. But don't worry, sinister legacy does not end here. Great nephew, Emperor Nero, oh boy, goes on to commit unspeakable acts of tyranny. We're talking persecution, killing, taking out his mom, and the family's intricate web of alliances and betrayals is just kind of a standout in Roman history, which is saying something. The darkest chapters in Roman history remain a haunting testament. Edward Harold Bell was an American killer and the first fugitive to be featured in the Texan rendition of America's Most Wanted. According to his claims, his father, an oil field worker, frequently moved the family to various towns surrounding the Houston area, and allegedly suffered physical harm from both him, his scoutmasters, and the Boy Scouts, and one of his cousins. Bell would also later claim in interviews that his father encouraged him to do violent crimes. We're talking robbing banks, taking advantage of women in a carnal fashion, and encouraging him to take his own life. Following his capture in Panama City, well, in 1993, he was extradited, convicted, and sentenced to a 70-year term for the killing of a Marine in 1978, and later confessed to killing 11 girls. The Wolf Pack is believed to have been formed as early as 2010, but it wasn't until the 2012 Toronto killing of John Raposo that this group gained national attention. Turns out, uh, the resulting trial heard that Raposo was involved in a deal with the Wolf Pack, but was killed over unsubstantiated rumors that he was a police informant. So going back to 2018, four men were found guilty of first-degree killing and conspiracy in... they were all tied to the Wolf Pack. One of those men, Rabbi Akahil, was apparently the top level brains of the wolf pack. Apparently he's very smart, very mobile, and very ruthless. Somebody you don't want to get on the wrong side of. Which is kind of exactly why the killing of Raposo happened in a very public space, as opposed to how, you know, most killings are done privately. And that's all for today, folks. I've been Alexa. See ya!